Hi everyone and welcome to WordStream's October webinar, Video Ads, How One Ad Format Will Revolutionize the Way You Advertise Online. My name is Amanda and I'm here to get things started before I pass it off to our in-house video ads expert. Many of you may know WordStream for our awesome content and thought leadership, but what a lot of people might not realize is that we also have a software service that allows you to manage Google Ads, Facebook, and Bing Ads from one place to really help you be strategic and improve your online advertising ROI. Also, before we get into the content, I just want to run over some logistics. Um, this webinar will be recorded today, and you can expect the recording and slide deck in your inbox within the next 48 hours. And most importantly, submit your questions. We will have a live Q&A at the end, and we want to hear from you. So without further ado, let's jump into the content, and I'm happy to present our presenter today, Alan Finn. Good afternoon. Uh, as Amanda said, I'm Alan. I've been at WordStream for a good long while. I started here as an account manager and I moved to our content team and now I'm a senior product marketing specialist here. Uh, I live in Boston. I moved here from New Hampshire and I think video ads are very, very valuable for businesses of all sizes and in most every vertical. Uh, so today, uh, just to elaborate a bit on what we're going to talk about, uh, first we're going to address why you should be using video ads if you're not already, uh, then dig into the reasons that, that Facebook and Instagram are the perfect place to use video ads, uh, how you can test and iterate at scale without paying a ton of money to do so, uh, how you should optimize your video ads on Facebook and Instagram, and then we'll get into your questions. So you need to be using video ads because of a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to run through these quickly. Uh, by 2019, internet video traffic will account for 80% of all consumer internet traffic. 92% of B2B prospects consume online video, which seems contradictory to, to what some of you might come into this webinar thinking, and that video is inherently more valuable for, for B2C businesses. 45% uh, of people watch more than an hour of Facebook or YouTube videos a week. Many of those videos watched are ads. Uh, in, in 2017, video completion rate, that's videos played all the way through, not just the first three seconds and then rolled out, uh, reached 69%. And by 2020, video ad spend is expected to reach $20 billion, which is, which is absolutely insane. Uh, according to Sheryl Sandberg of Facebook, one and a half million small and medium-sized businesses shared videos on Facebook in 2015, and that number has has grown exponentially since. Uh, some of those videos, as you know, are are promoted as boosted posts. Other ones are are used as ads and and leveraged accordingly. Um, they're a big deal. In in addition to all of these numbers and the amount of money that goes into video ad spend, people like them more than static content, where somebody m might engage with an, an image ad that, that you serve them on Facebook or Instagram for a few seconds. They spend five more time, five times longer, sorry, uh, engaging with your video content than they do that static content. Um, and it, it doesn't really matter what you are sharing in that video. It could be uh, an experience that you offer. It could be a feature of your product. It could be a, a brand message that you're delivering to people at the very top of your funnel. It could be a conversion action at the bottom. If you present it with a video uh, as the, the medium or the video is appended to some other uh, platform, uh, there people are likelier to, to spend time engaging with it. And I, I know what you might be thinking here, and that's that that video is too expensive for you to produce. And at some points in history, you would be right in thinking that. Uh, you would need to buy expensive camera equipment. You would need to write or hire somebody to write a script. Uh, you would need to pay actors or, or find some kind people on the street willing to lend their face. Uh, you would need to donate your time. And of course, you would need to figure out your media buy, whether whether that was 
sharing video on the internet or, or making TV commercials or whatever. And all, all of that is super expensive. And calculating it all up, it, it definitely doesn't sound like there would be positive R ROI in the creation of video ads for, for small and medium sized businesses or if you're an agency with smaller clients, it, there's better ways that you can leverage their budget. Uh, but I'd like you to, to repeat after me and that's that video does not have to be expensive. We'll just pause here for your minds to blow. Um, good. Now, uh, this this doesn't really have anything to do with with ads that we'll talk about it through the rest of this webinar. But uh, there's a Boston-based software company called Wistia. They do some amazing uh, video work, and uh, they actually just launched this this series called One Ten One Hundred. Uh, Basically, they made an ad for their soapbox platform for $1,000, one for $10,000, and one for $100,000. They're testing them all against one another. Um, $1,000 is still a lot of money to invest in the creation of a single video asset for your, your brand. But I, I think that you can take the, the general ethos of this experiment and you can pare it down even further. You don't need... Uh, expensive equipment, you don't need to hire a creative agency, you don't need an in-house director, you don't need lights or special effects to make effective video. Really, you can use your phone, a good idea, and the right audience to succeed there. Um, and, and there are tons of, of tools, free and otherwise, that you can use to make your phone or your computer at home or at work into, into a powerful tool for video creation. Uh, we have one. I'll talk about that in a little while. So why paid social? Uh, why am I talking about social instead of YouTube or some other um, video network, programmatic network, what have you? Um, first off, there's a huge user base between, between Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Facebook has more than 2 billion users. Instagram has more than 700 million users um, and Instagram in particular more than half of the users follow brands on the platform 11% of the earth's population uses Instagram and half of them follow some brand uh, granted maybe those are much larger brands with big shiny creative teams it's not a uh, plumber small agency etc but there is still a niche that you can find and speak to if you're willing to dig it up and cater your, your content creation and your, your advertising strategy to those people. Uh, and and I, I'd be remiss if I skipped Messenger here. Uh, that, that's also a, a Facebook platform. Ditto for, for WhatsApp. Um, the, the daily users there is astounding, but since we're talking video, I'm focusing exclusively on Facebook and Instagram right now. Um, but because, because there are these different platforms, uh, people who have different intent while they're scrolling around on them, they're using different devices at different times of day. Uh, you have the ability to, to build a, a funnel almost exclusively using Instagram and Facebook. You can introduce your, your brand to prospects at the top of the funnel uh, with, with quick hit videos. You can connect with people, provide more in-depth information, uh, in, in the middle of your funnel, and you can complement that obviously with, with paid search or display, remarketing, what have you. And then finally, for our most, our most valuable audiences, we can incite conversion. And as you can see here, that's not really something you're going to see too often from a B2B perspective on Instagram, but it's definitely something that you can incite on, on Facebook. Uh, so w what might this look like pretty, pretty simply? You, you need to create a campaign in, in order to, to launch any kind of video creative. Um, it's important to know that, that not every objective allows you to leverage video creative, but the majority of them do and, and do so in different formats. Um, since the, I would assume most of you today are, are B2B marketers, uh, we're gonna choose conversion as a, as a goal for sake of argument. Uh, before you go ahead and, and define your audience for, for a given ad set, jump all the way to the ad level and look at what's available to you from a, from a video perspective. Really, the only thing that doesn't include video to some degree or another is a single image. Uh, in a carousel, you can, use, you can use images, you can use videos, and you can use them in conjunction with one another. 
uh, a single video is probably the most common kind of, of video and that that's what you would, you would most commonly associate with video. It's Facebook's version of a TV commercial. Uh, there's, there's no other kind of interaction past look at it, click button. Uh, slideshow is a very low stakes uh, version of video. Uh, basically, you're just aggregating images together and, and turning them into something pretty and dynamic. Uh, it's a great entry point into creating video advertisements for, for small businesses that are trying to ball on a budget. Uh, and then and the collections and instant experiences are uh, something different entirely, and, and we'll get into that in a moment, but they're, they're definitely not for beginners. Uh, so as you can see, th there's immense variety across Facebook, Instagram, and the audience network uh, when, when it comes to video. And the, the variety available to you really reflects the way that people consume video content from the bite-sized videos, from silly little gifts that you append to, to quick low stakes actions, to in-stream unskippable audience network ads uh, that, that have people completely captivated and everything in between, whether that's live video that obviously isn't going to be encompassed in an advertisement, but is definitely engaging, something like a webinar you could run on, on Facebook, for example. Or Instagram stories, if you if you're a, a B2C brand, and uh, th that could be a, a really powerful channel for you since they're super engaging, and there's there's a visual and an oral component. The the sound is a bigger factor when it comes to Instagram stories than any of the other video ad types that we'll touch on today in Facebook and Instagram. Um, really, the world is your oyster here, and a lot of advertisers skip it, it being video because they they think it's probably too expensive. Uh, so at, at this point, what I'm going to do is just give you a high-level overview of all the different video ad types that are available to you across Facebook and Instagram. Um, the first of which, as I said, is the slideshow. So very low stakes entry point into the world of video. Uh, basically, you are going to stitch images together uh, between between two and, and ten of them. Uh, you can add text effects. You can add sounds. And it, it just provides something more captivating than, than a static image. Uh, they, they automatically play and loop, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's really easy for somebody to engage with them. They don't really have to take much by way of action. Uh, and they, they allow you to create an asset in minutes instead of, uh, as I mentioned before, like having to hire a, a videographer, a director, or a creative agency, somebody to storyboard for you. You can take existing assets that you have and, and create something totally workable. Uh, the next it would be a single video ad. So uh, these allow you to get a bit more creative. And this is where if you are hesitant to develop an entire video strategy, just using GIFs can be a, a low stakes way to implement video into your paid social advertising. Uh, particularly at the at the top of your funnel where you're just trying to give somebody an idea as to what your brand is about you're not asking them to take 15 minutes out of their day to read a sales page or to book a demo you're just trying to say hey you have a problem i can solve it or hello or whatever it gets at the ethos of your brand um one thing i will say here is that you shouldn't forget when you create a single video ad to customize your thumbnail. Uh, the thumbnail, as you obviously know, is, is the image that somebody will see when they're scrolling past in their feed, right? And while you can select from one of the frames in your video, you can also upload something completely custom. So if you wanna make that a branded message, if you want to use some words here to try to entice somebody to, to engage with your video, uh, it's a great opportunity to do so, and uh, it, it's little things like that going the extra mile on on something that might seem as trivial as a thumbnail that can in, inside action and and move somebody into into your funnel where otherwise they would have scrolled past and you would have remained anonymous to them. Uh, so here here are just a few examples of of video and GIF ads. Uh, the the next that we'll talk about is is lead ads and interestingly enough I had a very difficult time 
finding a lead ad that utilized video creative. Most of them tend to use static images. Uh, as, as you probably know, uh, lead ads are a way for somebody to fill out a form directly on Facebook and they don't have to hit your landing page. It will pull right into your CRM. Uh, it's, it's a good way to get leads at scale. They're not always necessarily the highest quality, but uh, implementing video here, if you're, especially if you're already using lead ads, is a, is a great way to drive even more volume. And uh, with that volume and then subsequent refinement can definitely come an improvement in quality. Next we have carousel. So carousel ads you might already be familiar with in, in static image form where you can string up to 10 different images together and people can scroll through them all. Uh, it's kind of similar to the slideshow ads but uh, less seamlessly stitched together. They also provide more opportunity to, to provide more written information that, that lives outside of your actual creative. So for, for each card or each video or blend of the two that you use in a carousel, you can have a, a different snippet of language beneath that can provide more context for what somebody is seeing. It's a great way to showcase products, to highlight different features of your, of your brand or product or service, to tell a story, uh, particularly at the, at the very top of your funnel when you're, you're just trying to cast a wide net and introduce people to your brand, or to explain a process intricately uh, when somebody's in the research phase of your sales cycle or looking to buy to give them more information as to why your brand is going to be a better solution from them than, uh, than a competitor might be. Uh, next we have canvas ads, uh, and, and they're not called canvas ads anymore. They actually recently changed to instant experiences. Instant experiences load instantly, uh, as, as the name would suggest. Uh, they're optimized for mobile. And they're designed to capture the complete attention of your audience. Um, so people watching them can engage with videos and photos. Uh, they can swipe through carousels. They can tilt to pan. They can explore tagged products that you add in there, all within a single environment. So they're super immersive, incredibly engaging. Uh, you're not going to pay money to show these to people who have no familiarity with your brand. Super valuable during a research phase. Uh, definitely leveraged more often by by B two C brands, but there are, there are creative ways that that B two B companies can utilize these as well. Uh, a couple of pretty great features about Canvas ads are that they're templatized and they're supported by almost every campaign objective. So whether you are trying to drive traffic, awareness, reach, engagement, conversions, views, visits, or installs of your app, uh, Canvas, sorry, instant experiences rather, are an option for you. Uh, in, in the same vein, we have collection ads. So collections are an extrapolation of canvas ads. Uh, they're definitely geared more towards e-commerce advertisers. Uh, and they, they have the ability to be, to be your best friend, at least outside of dynamic remarketing, which is obviously irreplaceably valuable to most e-com advertisers. Uh, but, but basically people would tap into a collection and they'll be, they'll be brought to one of the seamless experiences that I, that I referred to previously. And um, they never have to leave Facebook or Instagram and they can explore a ton of your content, learn way more about your products. They come in four different flavors, storefront, lookbook, customer acquisition, and storytelling. And uh, Facebook really recommends using these at, at any stage of your funnel. So to generate intent, uh, to, to nurture that intent when somebody enters your instant experience, uh, and then to subsequently drive people to your website or app and then you can get them to to convert. So it, it's really like a like a funnel in and of itself uh, where the most valuable action is obviously going to occur elsewhere, but within here you can you can nurture incredibly quickly. Uh, next we have Instagram stories. So I I would assume that since 11% of the world's population uses Instagram, some of you do too. 
uh, and you're obviously going to be familiar with stories. Uh, you can advertise in stories, and these are full screen takeover of mobile only ads that, that allow you to share information uh, with your followers or, or people who look like your followers, people you're targeting, what have you. Uh, a recent study by Instagram found that 60% of, of users learn about products and services through the platform and 75% of those people took action such as visiting a site, searching or telling a friend after seeing an Instagram post. So they're not unvaluable. This, this is akin to uh, in-market or affinity display audiences, I would say. It's probably not going to incite a conversion today, but this, this is a great first touch. 60% um, of stories are viewed with sound on. As I mentioned before, sound is not the most important aspect of most of these videos. It's, it's the dynamic uh, nature of the format that's most important. Uh, but sound here is, is often going to be playing, so making sure that, that you are paying attention to what your video sounds like is, is key for an engaging story. Uh, and I think that th this basically represents low-hanging fruit from a, a business perspective because half of businesses uh, on Instagram created a story in the last month. If you're already making one of these, why not amplify what you're already generating? You don't need to create net new assets. You just need to leverage them more effectively. Next, we have in-stream ads. And uh, this is going to look more like something you would see on, say, YouTube. So uh, people spend more and more time watching longer form videos on their phones. And Facebook works with creators uh, similar to, to what you, again, might see on YouTube uh, who have built communities around what they are creating explicitly for Facebook's platforms uh, so that ads can be implemented within them. So th this is, again, uh, never going to be a, a direct path to conversion. This is an, an introduction to your brand where you target people based on the kinds of content they're consuming. Uh, Facebook calls this lean, lean back mode. Um, the, the most valuable part of these kinds of ads are that they are really short and they're unskippable. Uh, so there's a lot of value in, in forcing somebody's hand and, and making them pay attention to you for 15 whole seconds. You can do a lot in that short span. Uh, but this is probably a place where you're going to need some, some more creative resources and might not be for you when we have so many options that are cost effective, uh, particularly if you're, if you're not in a position where you can invest a ton of budget uh, in, in creating a, a great ad. Basically, the, the bottom line here is that between Facebook and Instagram, you have a ton of different tools that can help you succeed at every stage of the funnel uh, in every m mobile device shape and, and orientation. The downside here is that there are an unfathomable number of rules and regulations. So for, for every type of ad, there is a place that that ad can be served. There are ratios that are allowed and are not allowed. There are, are length maximums and minimums. There are support, supported objectives. There is the ability to include captions or not. There is a sound requirement. Um, and, and then there are, are design recommendations and, and different calls to action that, that need to be considered in addition to that. Uh, luckily, if you click this link on the sticky note right here, uh, that would take you to Facebook's ads guide, and that's going to give you all of these breakdowns across all of the different ad formats and devices that, that are accessible to you from a, a video advertising perspective. So we'll tell you what they recommend uh, design-wise, the objectives that are supported, and the calls to action that are supported. And as you can see here, uh, this is just a fit for Facebook feed video ads. You can you can see that our CTAs range from apply now to contact us to download to see menu. So it doesn't matter if you're uh, trying to pitch a white paper to somebody in, in a research phase. It doesn't matter if you're a restaurant with a three mile radius targeting around yourself trying to find people on a Friday night to come into your spot. 
um, or, or if you're getting people to register for a webinar or book a sales demo or, or sell something, you can use video ads to do it. You're just not gonna be able to do it uh, across the board. Uh, you, you really need to pay attention to where you're advertising and what you're advertising with. And, and they, there's a ton of information. They make it pretty, pretty easy for you to figure it out. Uh, and it, once you get the hang of it, it, it's no different than advertising anywhere else. Uh, so now we're going to take a quick look at how to easily create powerful video ads uh, without paying a ton of money for somebody to do it for you. And uh, th this is also going to be a, a shameless plug for s something that, that we at uh, WordStream offer uh, in, in our WordStream Advisor platform. So uh, as, as I've touched on and as you definitely know, uh, most small businesses and agencies are aware that adding video ads to their strategy will pay off, but they lack the expertise and time to craft powerful creative. Uh, WordStream makes this easier for you uh, with our tool, Smart Video Ads. Uh, it pulls images directly from your company's Facebook page, your website, uh, or anything that you upload to the tool, and then turns them into a professional quality video asset. Uh, you choose from one of 11 different dynamic templated themes, uh, each of which has its own flares you'll see in a bit and uh, accompanying music. And you can you can kick off your, your video ad strategy and, and iterate on it super quickly. So you're welcome. Um, if you're familiar with uh, WordStream Advisor, uh, you're gonna go to the Manage tab, go to Facebook, and then and then create a new ad, select your campaign, select your ad set, and then uh, select videos. Uh, from there, you're gonna hit from new theme, and then you can choose from one of the uh, 11 themes that I, that I just mentioned. Uh, you, can, you can see their names, they, they represent varying lengths from, from 15 to 35 seconds. And then you're going to either crawl your Facebook business manager or, or website for images. You can upload your own images. Uh, upload uh, a logo for your brand, edit your the text snippets that, that fall at, at prescribed intervals, hit save, and then you'll end up with something that looks like this. So I threw that together five minutes before I finished my deck and sent it to Amanda. Uh, obviously you could spend more time taking with it and make something a bit more engaging if you so choose, but that took me no time at all. And, and now there's, there's a video ad in existence where, where previously I would have been stuck with static images. With that, seven tips for optimizing your video ads. Number one, is skip the sound. Uh, pretend you're Charlie Chaplin, not Will Smith. 85% um, of videos viewed on Facebook are done so without sound. Uh, you need to include copy around your videos and any key points should be highlighted with some kind of dynamic text in your videos. Don't throw something in a corner, make it big and bold, and, and really work to truncate your copy there. Uh, in, in the event you're creating longer videos, uh, definitely try to implement subtitles. Uh, according to Animoto and, and uh, my research for this, 39% uh, of consumers are more likely to finish an ad with subtitles than one without. Uh, obviously, that's a function of their, their sound being turned off. Uh, our, our next strategy is to, to track real KPIs. It's really easy to get bogged down in video-specific results, whether that's views, seconds viewed, reach, uh, videos played, percentages watched, and Facebook breaks that down pretty nicely, whether somebody watched anything versus 25% all the way to 100%. You can look at average watch time. And all of these are really useful metrics in determining how you might want to structure your next video ad. But 
only looking at those and not paying attention to conversions and and what really matters revenue is is short-sighted and it you're you're rarely going to see conversions from from these video ads if you're only running them at the top of your funnel right just like you're not going to see conversions from really low search intent keywords on google ads or broad keyword targeted display ads um, but when you're advertising with video to audiences on facebook and instagram who are just ripe ready to buy you need to know what impact that video is having on on your bottom line and that might take revisiting your attribution model and making sure you understand how many different touch points there were between introduction and conversion uh there there might be a, another way that you can that you can measure impact there but just don't get lost in the video specific minutia our our third tip here is to get to the point uh, if you have a 15 second video, you cannot afford to make an independent film. Um, don't be slow out the gate. You want to implement movement, try bright colors, something that happens quickly, something to catch attention and make it very clear that this is a video and even with the sound off, somebody can be engaged. They know it's not a still image. Uh, if the first few seconds are so subtle that it appears to be an image, uh, people will probably scroll right past and, and not pay attention. So think about it. If you have 15 seconds, you need to move quickly to grab their attention. You need to show them your brand. You need to convey a message and you need to provide a CTA. That's a ton of stuff to do in 15 seconds. It's very doable. And checking out the Facebook Creative Hub, uh, just, just as one example of a place you can look at superlative pieces of ad creative, uh, is a great way to see how, how big brands do those things quickly. And you can then extrapolate and, and adapt those ideas down uh, to make sense for, for your business. As I mentioned before, something that's super important with video ads is to consider the, the thumbnail image. Um, th again, this is the still image that people will see before your video plays. Um, Facebook will recommend that you upload a custom thumbnail. However, you do not have to. You can also choose from uh, the dynamically selected frames that will pop up in Facebook. Um, I, I guess it's also important to note that if, if a video is part of a boosted post, or it's linked to from a place that isn't Facebook, you cannot choose a thumbnail. Um, so you, to get the most out out of thumbnails as a as a useful marketing tool in your in your video marketing on Facebook and Instagram, uh, I would try to to generate things as net new ads as as opposed to doing either of those things. Uh, number five is that that text is is really important, uh, but in in moderation so a few short captions within the the video itself can help to to pique the interest of your audience even if they're they're watching without the sound off but trying to make somebody sit there and read 15 for 15 seconds on a small screen in a video surrounded by other text embedded in a platform containing more text is you're going to achieve nothing. You're just contributing to white noise. Um, so again, leveraging the the external text, so the the headline and description that are available to you, uh, making sure you have a, a well aligned CTA button to your audience, the the intent that they might have, the stage of your funnel that they are at is super important, and putting the biggest boldest statements you're going to make within your creative itself. Uh, is really, really the only only time you should be putting language in there, unless, as I mentioned before, you're going to use captions. This this should go without saying, but people people think video and they think TV and people sitting on their couch. There's no way to control who those people are. Uh, a huge benefit of Facebook and Instagram is that we can still create super granular audiences. Um, 
using lookalike audiences as you as your jumping off point for video ads can can be a, a great way to to prove value either to yourself to your boss to your client uh, because you can reach people who are in some way similar to your most valuable audiences so if you create a 1% lookalike of your converters in the last year or something like that um, it, you can you can hit people with a branded message at, and move them down your funnel exponentially faster than if you had to go out fishing for them uh, at, by other means. Um, again, make sure that CTA aligns with audience. You shouldn't be asking somebody who has never heard of you for a demo, uh, just like it would be silly to ask somebody who just had a demo to download white papers. Uh, you you should be segmenting, and you should be showing very targeted messages to to people. Otherwise, you're not going to maximize the potential ROI of of video. And uh, finally, uh, make sure that when you split test, you split test with purpose. You shouldn't create one video, use it across four campaigns and twenty ad sets and uh, get upset that it doesn't work. You should be perpetually testing, and, and some of the things that you can test with a video uh, visually is reorganizing. So if you're using a slideshow, you can change the order. If you're using a carousel, you can change the order. If you are capable of editing video, you can move where the CTA or various callouts in your, your video are. If you're using a 15 second clip, there aren't going to be too many components to work with and you can make variants very easily. Uh, format wise, testing landscape versus square versus portrait. And again, that will uh, be dependent on the kind of video ad that you're trying to create, but there are definitely different, different ways you can do that. Again, testing whether uh, you want somebody to see your ad on mobile versus desktop, optimizing ads for mobile and desktop, uh, another way that you can test there. Uh, placements, you should segment Instagram out and advertise explicitly on Instagram and explicitly on Facebook and make sure that you are considering what kind of content people want to see on those platforms, trying to show the same thing across the board. Uh, it could be effective. It also could not be effective. So figuring out whether you can blast the same creative in both of those channels or if you need to customize your strategy is super important. Uh, again, tweaking your text, uh, adjusting calls to action, adjusting the amount of text in your videos, using captions, not using captions, uh, the way your text is designed. So kind of from a CRO perspective, um, what kind of colors are you using, fonts, backgrounds? Are you putting text over your, uh, it's difficult to read. Um, audio, uh, particularly important for Instagram stories, but are you using songs? Are you using some kind of voiceover? Is that scripted voiceover? Are these candid videos? Uh, and then length, uh, you have to be between two and 15 seconds uh, for most of these formats. Uh, how quickly are your videos moving? Do you see a correlation between brevity or length and and their success? It's, there there are infinite possibilities within these limited form uh, suggestions in, in terms of testing. Uh, you can you can really go deep on video uh, if you're if you're willing to take the time to to test here. And um, that's it. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Alan. That was awesome. There was so much content there, so much to learn. Um, we did have a few questions come through that I wanted to go over. Um, but while we are talking about some of the questions, I wanted to throw up an offer here um, to everyone on the line with us today. We went over our video tool really briefly, and I know I saw a lot of comments come through about how cool it was and how interesting they thought that would be and quick and easy. Um, so we're offering up today, would you guys like to see that in action with maybe some of your own pictures, some of your own content? Um, let us know. You know, if you'd like to hop on the phone with one of our experts, they can make a video ad for you and you can see that tool in action for yourself. Um, but while you guys are answering some questions there, um, or sorry, answering the offer there, let's ask Alan some of the questions that came through. 
Um, so I want to touch back on, since we were just talking about optimizations and targeting um, specifically, someone was wondering, how does Facebook find or define lookalike audiences? Are we doing that? What do they know? How do we utilize that effectively? So the way that lookalike audiences work uh, is you, you provide an audience and that audience can be sourced in, in a variety of different ways. It can be a, a, a list that you upload of like customer email addresses, for example. Uh, from there, you choose a country and Facebook says, here are the people in that space who have attributes similar to members of the audience that you shared. Uh, and, and you can get a bit more granular and, and you can look at the degrees of similarity between between one and and ten percent, one percent being the most similar, ten percent being a much larger, broader audience. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so, also, let's jump back to what we talked about involving Insta Stories for a second. So, you talked about. Um, being able to have ads there and someone was wondering is that me putting my own content on our own stories or is that targeting ads like we do on Facebook where people are scrolling through other stories and they see our content the latter um, so that that would be creating creating like net new content and, and sharing it across stories and then we also had a question come through from an agency who is wondering, you know, what's your advice on if our client has minimal visual content? We thought the video ad tool was really cool, but we're worried that they don't have the right pictures or content to make it look good. Uh, so as I, as I mentioned, you have the ability to scrape their, their Facebook business page. So if there's any creative there, you can leverage that. You can scrape their website. And if there's anything there, you can leverage that. You can also upload your own assets. So if you want to create something, uh, you can upload that and, and you can use that as a foundation for, for an ad. Um, eventually, and I'm, I can't give you a real date because I'm not sure, we will have uh, a stock library integrated into the tool. So that will make uh, solving that problem much easier. Uh, I'm unsure as to what the timeline there is though. Awesome, and we just have one more question. I just wanted you to quickly rehash what you think the best format or platform is for beginners to try out video ads. Um, slideshow, but that, that's kind of cheating um, be, because you're you're just stitching images together. But that's it's the the easiest way for you to generate some kind of dynamic asset. Um, my other suggestion would be to to use gifs because. Everybody loves them, and and they're they're pretty easy to put together, and they're not going to cost you a ton of money in in, in terms of production. Awesome. Um, well, that's about all the time we have for questions today. Um, thank you, Alan, again. That content was amazing, and people were really loving it. So again, you can expect to see the slide deck and recording in your inbox within the next 48 hours, and we hope to see everyone else on our next webinar. Thank you.